If you enjoy the topics and videos you see here on Power of Thought, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. It would really help to support us. Mostly, it is loss which teaches us about the worth of things. Have you ever felt as if the world were more bad than good? Been so overwhelmed by the atrocities, wars, and bitterness of humanity that you felt as if it were irredeemable? As if, perhaps, what we thought it meant to be human, to be happy, successful, and enriched in life was all a lie? If you have ever felt these pessimistic attitudes towards politics, causes, or life in general, you can count yourself among one of the greatest geniuses of history. Arthur Schopenhauer. In his mind, much of the pain and anxiety we experience while alive comes from an increased intellect. Those who tend more towards genius are too aware of the true nature of existence, too tuned in to something which permeates in the very base of reality and up through all that would call the cosmos. A blind, uncaring, inhuman force which contradicts all of the ideas and meaningful things that we think are so important. This force is the will. The will does not care about you, your desires in life, or what you hold dear. The will does not care for human ideas or prophecies. The will does not care at all. It just is. In fact, it is all that there really is. All of our efforts in life our desire to get a promotion, start a family, to gain fame for our work, for Schopenhauer, is just a manifestation of this will. He took a look at the suffering in not only the human world, but in nature as well, and determined that there could be no other explanation for the cruel realities that all living things are forced to endure. That the nature of reality was something far more sinister than the religions and philosophies that came before him. Setting the tone for this, he once wrote, These turtles come this way from the sea in order to lay their eggs, and are then seized by wild dogs. With their united strength, these dogs lay them on their backs, tear open their lower armor, the small scales of the belly, and devour them alive. And a tiger often pounces on the dogs. Now all this misery is repeated thousands and thousands of times, year in, year out. For this, then, are these turtles born? For what offense must they suffer this agony? What is the point of the whole scene of horror? Schopenhauer's answer? The will. Cosmic will that permeates all of existence and in living things manifests itself as the will to life. In his magnum opus, The World as Will and Representation, he asserts that our ideas are our own attempts to understand the will, and the multiplicity we think that we see is a simple construction of our own minds and the expressions of living things. And our will to life, that striving to survive, reproduce, gain power, and express ourselves is, instead of our own willing, simply the will permeating through us, blindly driving us to further propagate itself. When we look through our own history as a species, it is difficult to ignore this insight. How many generations were born to be soldiers, hard laborers, and servants in one form or another? How many great campaigns of war, from Genghis Khan to Napoleon Bonaparte, were seen as the wars to establish an empire that would bring peace, justice, and security to the world, but instead were simply devoured like the tiger that pounces on the dogs? It would be better if there were nothing. Since there is more pain than pleasure on earth, every satisfaction is only transitory, creating new desires and new distresses, and the agony of the devoured animal is always far greater than the pleasure of the devourer. Every generation promises a new breakthrough, a new government or system that will make all these things go away, but the cycle has been on repeat for thousands of years of human civilization. Schopenhauer is often described as a bitter and disgruntled man, critiquing his contemporaries and predecessors ruthlessly. His unapologetically pessimistic take on life stemmed from what he described as a melancholy inherited from his father, a man who was pushed to suicide by chronic depression. This bleak attitude and his powerful intellect made him into something of a recluse, preferring the company of very few, and most of the time, just himself, to most social settings. After all, a man of genius can hardly be sociable, 
for what dialogues could indeed be so intelligent and entertaining as his own monologues. The reason that he believed that an increased intellect led to more pain in life was because of his views on how one could contend with the will. If the will is the ultimate driving force for all of our desires, how could we possibly contend with it? Well, he claimed that by use of the mind one could starve the will. He felt that by doing one's best to shed worldly desires and live a more ascetic life, one could take more control over their life, and not be a puppet for this will. This is where his pessimism comes in, and why most people felt he simply hated life. But the view of him as an angry, bitter man is short-sighted, because even in the darkest places of the mind he was able to find a sense of happiness, a harmony with an existence that he once grappled with so fiercely. He admired the arts as a whole for their ability to connect us to the world in a way that abstract pursuits could not. He loved to play his flute, walk his dogs, and indulged in many Eastern philosophical texts like the Upanishads. He took so seriously the arts and music that he is often referred to as the artist's philosopher. But more than any form of the arts, more than any other single thing that exists in the world of our experience, Schopenhauer found solace in music. The effect of music is so very much more powerful and penetrating than is that of the other arts. For these speak only of the shadow, but music of the essence. Music, to him, allowed each of us to live in the truest possible way. Instead of getting lost in our past, our future, and our divisive ideas, we live in the present when we listen to a song. A song is an everlasting now. Each moment stands on its own and allows us to simply exist instead of grappling with why we exist. It is difficult to find happiness within oneself, but it is impossible to find it anywhere else. If there is anything we can take away from Schopenhauer and actually bring into our everyday lives, it is this. The universe is not made for you. It doesn't care about you, and all of the ideologies humans try to create to pin down who we are and how we should live are desperate and ultimately failed attempts to explain this careless universe. But in this realization, we can let go of trying to be this or that and simply be us. With this, we may finally start to hear the music of life and join in on the dance. <laughs>